So, friends, uh, in this session, we will be discussing about two topics. One is on how emotionally mature are you, and the second one is increasing or improving, improving your emotional intelligence. And you can understand from this that how this emotional inte emotional intelligence is also emotional maturity. And there are two components, two sides of it. One is called the personal competency, another is called the social competency in emotional intelligence. What I see and what I do? In personal competency, it deals with the self awareness and self management. In social competency, it deals with social awareness and relationship management. And these in various terms are called the emotional intelligence. To go to the detail, you look at this figure. You see, look at it. This is the dark side, and this thing happened in the 2006 World Cup final. The French player hit Italy's player. And do, do you see, can you conclude that the person who is hitting the other person with his head, is that person emotionally mature? Definitely your answer will be no. And therefore, we say that the person lacks emotional maturity or emotional intelligence. And uh, here I ask you some, when someone you respect insults and humiliates you in front of others about a mistake you have made, you go home and uh, you say that I, you put yourself in such situation and say that I will not meet that person. You get a hangover about the incident, make a sharp comeback go home and write a letter to defend your position. Then gradually you take it easy, talk with the person how you felt and also communicate to yourself, communicate to your friends about this incident. So, here if you see, if the person take the steps like go home and vow never to put yourself in such situation and you get a hangover about the incident, then in that case you show the emotional immaturity. But if you come back, if you sharply come back, go home and write a letter defending your position and take it and talk with the person how you felt and to communicate with your friends and you are no more bothered about the situation and that shows your emotional maturity or emotional intelligence. So, is emotional maturity is emotional intelligence? Yes, it is so, but we use the word emotional intelligence, not the word emotional maturity. That means, he has a required emotion to understand himself as well as to understand others and to show his response accordingly in a particular situation. And emotional intelligence was developed by Salvi and Mayer and popularized by Goldman as a competency model. And what it speaks that it is the ability of person to cognitively assess the emotions within oneself and recognize them in others and so as to modulate behavior. That means, I will understand myself, my emotions, as well as the other persons with whom I talk, and then understanding this, I will modulate my emotions so as to fit to the context. 
So, therefore, it is basically a process where you are aware about yourself, about others and the context and accordingly you are displaying your response responses. And uh, simply it is the use of emotions intelligently is emotional intelligence. It is the use of emotions intelligently. That means, you understand about yourself, about the others with whom you interact and then accordingly you are showing a response which is fitting to the context. And uh, EIC or the emotional intelligence competency when we speak, it has different components. But one point of importance is that whether it is motivation or emotions or it is uh, inspiring somebody or it is the leadership, it passes to the other person in a context through some sort of verbal and non-verbal communication. It passes to the other persons in a particular context, whether it is a motivation, whether it is leadership or whether it is emotional intelligence, it passes to the other person in a specific context through verbal and non-verbal communication. And this emotional intelligence as I mentioned uh, that it has different components. It has self awareness, self management, social awareness and relationship management. And this is one of the classic articles in HBR where, where uh, 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 Goldman mentions about these attributes of emotional intelligence. If you look at the self awareness and self management, basically these are the personal competencies. If you look at the social awareness and relationship management, these are basically later on it was converted to empathy and social skills, these are basically the personal and social competencies. Then the question must be coming to our mind, what is the relationship between intelligence and emotion? As you know and I discussed earlier, all intelligence tests they, man, they, man, they measure your analytical skills, logical ability and the creativity they measures your divergent thinking. And if the curve is that emotion, the intelligence increases up to 17 or 18 years or 20 years, then it maintains a parallel, then it maintains a particular level. Then after 60, it gradually declines, little declines and it remains constant throughout the life, but it increases up to 20 years because of the myelination of the brain cells. And the, but and the emotional intelligence with your experience, with your changing perspectives, with getting with your maturity, with your development in life, your emotional intelligence will show a straight linear curve with your age, which is not so in case of IQ, which is not so in case of intelligent quotient or IQ or intelligence because intelligence increases up to 17 years of age or 20 years of age with the myelination of the cell, then it makes a constant, then it remains more or less constant up to 60 years of age and after 60 years because there is a dryness of certain brain fluids and all that, it gradually little declines, not much. But whereas, emotional in intelligence increases throughout your life and where if one is concerned with the logical thinking, another is concerned with the interpersonal skills and social skills. It is difficult to differentiate between the two. It is difficult to differentiate the two because recent literature, plenty of literature is there that emotion and cognition are related. 
cognition refers to higher mental processes like thinking, decision making, perception, these are the higher mental processes. And emotion and cognition are necessary friends, they are not separate. Extensive evidence is there. Suppose, I dislike a particular person, my liking and disliking is my emotional part of it. If I dislike, this is a negative emotion, if I like the person, it is a positive emotion. And in that case, what will happen? Suppose, I like the person, I will perceive that the person is very sharp and he is very cordial, very sharp and his thinking power is improved and he has improved thinking power and at the same time, he is a good decision maker. If I dislike the persons, then the reverse perception will come that he is poor in thinking, he has poor decision making ability and so on. So, therefore, it is very difficult to say emotion will drive the cognition or cognition will relate to emotions, it is very difficult, it is not yet settled. But one point is sure that emotion and cognition are related and both are the necessary friends, they are not separate. And when Goldman, he published his article in HBR 1998, he identified the different dimensions of emotions and these are, these are the he believed in competency model and these are the different dimensions that we mentioned earlier. One is a, and when we perceive and identify emotion of other person, we identified through seeing the face, observing the eye contact, hearing its uh, tone of voice and all through other body languages. And then once we understand that this person has this, this sort of emotions, then understanding that I am aware about my own emotions, I modulate my emotion accordingly, so that it will fit to the appropriate context. That is what emotional intelligence is. And it has various dimensions like self awareness, the ability to recognize and understand your moods, emotions and drives as well as their effects on others. And the hallmark is that those who have self aware, they are very confident, they have a sense of humor and they have a realistic self assessment. And in a meeting, even if we mention about their weaknesses and strength, they do not feel much, because they are aware about themselves, they do not feel so hot. And they at the same time, they have a sense of humor. Suppose a manager has a tight deadline, so therefore, having self aware or knowing that there is a tight deadline for a job to be completed or assignment to be completed, he will make a plan in advance, so that the job will completed in time. If the job is bigger, then it will take more time. If the job, even if the job is bigger, he will plan in advance being aware of the job, so that he can meet the deadline and complete the assignment. Similarly, self regulation, this is the ability to control and, dis and redirect disruptive impulses and moods. That means, you the person is has the ability to control his impulses and moods, that is the self regulation and it increases the trustworthiness of the person, the integrity of the person, what he says and what he does. And this person having the self regulation, they have a comfort with the ambiguity. Even if there is an ambiguous situation, they do not, they, they, they can tolerate the ambiguity and they are openness to change. When a team spoils a presentation, the leader fears 
and considers possible reasons for failures, then explain the consequences to the team and explores the solution with them, because the, 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 because the, because the leader has a sense of self regulation. Another is motivation, motivation as you know it is the passion to do the work is motivation that go beyond money and status. As I mentioned earlier, if you look at the life sketch of Mother Teresa and Gandhi or some of the great personalities in wor world, they are driven by an ideology or driven by a cause, not by the money. And uh, it is the propensity to pursue the goal with energy and persistence. And these persons have a strong drive to achieve, they are optimistic. And in the face of failure, what you, and they can easily bounce back from the failure, and they have a commitment towards the organization. Say, for example, I cite the case of a person, Ken Briggs, who was a sales person, and he was promoted to the position of a area sales manager, because in the position of sales person, he performed very well. And he, he was selling the stocks of the company and he was surpassing the target frequently. And that, that took him to the position of area sales manager. When he went there, he found, as he was doing when he was a sales person, he was trying to do everything by himself he was never delegating the responsibility to the subordinates. And he was trying to do everything by himself which is next to impossible, next to, next to impossible. And the office was looking chaotic. He was not bothering about the people those who are working with him. As a result, the subordinates, they felt demoralized. And the he could not because in the area sales area sales manager position one has to coordinate the activities of the sales person. He was not good in communication, he was not able to coordinate, he was himself was trying to do everything by himself, what he was doing as a sales person. And at the same time he was not bothering about others. He had the power. But he has a personalized face of power, not had a socialized face of power that was bothering, delegating the responsibility to others and coordinating the activities and getting the job done through them. As a result of which after some time, he could not accomplish his job and he persuaded the management. And again with the persuasion of the management and with the approval of the management, he again returned to his first love that is sales and he again sold the old stock of the company. What this incident speaks that if the person has the motivation, he can do, but at the same time when you are working in an organization, if you are charged or you are motivated, you have to motivate others also to go with them. If you do not accomplish that goal, you cannot motivate others, then in that case the goal cannot be accomplished. So, when a company fails to implement the pay hike, HR manager based on his experience devised a new formula to bring about a turn around and gave a estimation to the company how the pay hike can occur and that can sustain the financial strength of the company and it will be beneficial for the company, because he was, he has the motivation to do it and at the same time he understood the different facets of the business and he coordinated with the different parties and the data and then he devised a formula on the basis of which the pay high can be there. What was the demand of the employees? Empathy is the ability to understand others. And, uh, 
and it is the skill to treating people according to their emotional reactions. And empathy is one of the expertise in building and retaining talent and empathetic people are cross culturally sensitive and they give better service to the clients and customers. And empathetic people they all the time show a concern for the others as a result of which when they try to understand another person, the empathetic person put himself in other person's shoes. Then only he or she tries to understand the other person, taking the context and the situation of the other person into account. So, having high empathy means you have high interpersonal sensitivity and this is a signal that you can sell the boat. And you can also having a empathetic concern, you can also get the other employees into the bus and they can travel with you towards the destination. And last one is the social skills and social skills it is the proficiency in managing relationship and building networks, it is an ability to find common ground and build rapport. Effectiveness in leading change it is associated with persuasiveness, these are the hallmarks and expertise in building and leading teams. Social skill is simply bonding with others. This does not mean that the executive and the managers or the employees in the organization will establish bonds with others in order to or network with others, because nobody has that luxury of time. So, if they establish the bonds with others whom they see that their goal can be achieved. They establish the bonds with others understanding that when there will be in crisis or the organization will be in crisis, they will be the persons who will come to their rescue. So, therefore, they establish bonds with others with a purpose in mind. Without purpose, without any aim that does not mean that they are establishing bonds with others. In a company, there are many grievances and the grievances were not settled in time. So, the chief personal officer of the company decided that he was good in interpersonal skills. So, he decided that we can have a Khola Darbar as it is in Southeastern Railway workshop. In a particular day, the employee will come the personal manager or the executive will sit and at the same time the employee and the employee representative will be there. More or less a number of people from different segments are present. Then the dialogue continues and in the process it expedited or it quickened the process of grievance settlement. Because the person has the social skills the personal manager and the executives as the social skill, he was able to settle the grievances by satisfying other parties very soon. Because in order to succeed in business, one has to know the different ski, different uh, uh, different aspects of business. One has to know the marketing, one has to understand the finance, one's operations, IT, HR, everything must be in the fingertips. So, that you can relate a particular grievance to a particular context and you can find out a better solution if you are good in human relations. So, these are some of the, so if you look into self awareness, self regulation and motivation, these are the personal competency on the part of the individual. If you think of the empathy and social skills, these are basically the interpersonal competency or the social competency that make up that intelligence, that make up that emotional intelligence. And lastly, you can test understanding that what is your emotional intelligence, we have prepared five statements and the response is given and it is from strongly agree to strongly disagree, strongly disagree to strongly agree. And there is a right side, there is a bar where you can feel your answers. 
and it is one of our publications, recent publications. I can always, it, these statements are very simple, based on the same five dimensions of intelligence, give, emotional intelligence given by Goldman. I can always recognize his or her emotions and feelings, the first component. I can very well understand the feelings and emotions of the others, self-regulation. I can control my emotions and challenge them in future fruitful ways. I always keep motivating myself and others to improve further, motivation. I try to understand others putting myself in their positions, empathy. So, therefore, if you critically analyze this, the five statements represents the five dimensions of emotional intelligence as mentioned by uh, Goldman. And here, you will uh, see the score on all items. If your score is greater than or equal to 20 or 80 percent of the score you have secured, because the maximum score will be a 25, your EI is reasonably acceptable and good. Otherwise, you try to improve your emotional intelligence. That we will talk in the next part. Thank you.